welcome in. Welcome back to another episode of the Format Podcast. Got a pretty good show for you here today. Going to talk some NFL. Big trade that happened, I think it was uh, Friday. Um, definitely wasn't over the weekend. It was uh, Friday. Big trade and um, definitely going to maybe shake up the balance of the NFC North. So definitely looking forward to talking that, Justin Fields. But uh, before we get to it, you know what we got to do. If you haven't already, please go ahead and click that subscribe, that like, and that notification bell here on YouTube so that uh, you can stay up to date on the new content we're putting out and uh, you can help this channel uh, continue to grow. Uh, if you want the audio-only version of the podcast, go ahead, open up your audio podcast platform, hit the search bar, type in the format podcast, do a little search, we should come up. Um, if you uh, if you do, please make sure you go ahead, give us that five-star review. And um, also make sure that you uh, share the podcast and leave us a comment here on YouTube and on your audio podcast platform. All that stuff helps the channel grow, helps us to uh, find more sports fans, helps more sports fans find us. All right, let's get right to it. So um, if you've been around for a while on the uh, NFL side of things of this podcast, um, in the 2021 draft, I said that my QB1 was Justin Fields. Um, I was uh, pretty much on an island with that when everyone had Trevor Lawrence as being the guy. Definitely took Trevor Lawrence some time and some adjustments in uh, his coaching staff to kind of come around and start living up to his billing uh, here in Jacksonville. But I definitely had uh, Justin Fields as the guy based on what I saw from him at Ohio State. Yes, he had elite receivers with uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba, uh, Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave. All three of them are going to be first round draft pick receivers. Uh, Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave already are, and Jackson Smith and Jigma most likely will be this year. Now, of course, they have elite wide receiver talent at Ohio State, but just watching Justin Fields play, you knew about his athleticism in terms of being able to get out of the pocket and move, but he wasn't doing a whole lot of that at Ohio State. He was throwing darts, he was throwing dimes, and really exceeding in the passing game. And it wasn't just some uh, gimmicky college passing game either, because uh, Ryan Day, he's an NFL guy and he runs an NFL passing scheme there at Ohio State and Justin Fields really excelled in that. So just kind of looking at that in terms of his ability to make tight window throws, his ability to make downfield throws with tremendous accuracy, his ability to move in the pocket and still make those throws to me, I found it to be so far superior uh, than Trevor Lawrence who often was throwing to receivers that were running wide open based on the fact that I want to say Justin Fields is um, not Justin Fields, excuse me, Trevor Lawrence's junior year. I believe uh, Clemson had 11 out of the 16 five star recruits in the entire Atlantic Coast Conference. So I say that to say uh, Trevor Lawrence's talent was always so far ahead of the opposition, almost always that you know his receivers were often running free now with that said trevor lawrence did step up have huge games against elite uh competition so i'm not saying that uh he was a bum or anything i'm saying in my estimation and from what i saw i had justin fields as qb1 coming out of that um that year in that draft so uh he ends up dropping the chicago bears go ahead and grab him and i thought that was interesting because just uh watching him um, he didn't have an outstanding uh, rookie year. Then he comes back the second year. He's uh, definitively the starter. You get a new head coach. You get um, Eberflus, and then I believe you get Getze coming in from Green Bay to run that system, hoping that Eberflus being a defensive guy, being a head coach, so you want to have uh, somebody who is outstanding in terms of teaching and un teaching a system offensively. And that was Luke Getze coming from uh, Green Bay, who obviously had worked with Aaron Rodgers. Now, um, <laughs> Justin Fields, this was interesting this past season because had he not gotten injured, he would have broken Lamar Jackson's single season rushing record for a quarterback. And we saw he's already got the single game rushing record for a quarterback. At a guy his size, I want to say he's about 6'3", 6'4", 220, he can really move. And we've seen him do some amazing things in the quarterback run game. Now, part of that is um, clearly the Bears didn't think that he was far enough along in the passing game part of playing quarterback in the NFL. Uh, Darnell Mooney, his number one receiver, also had some injuries. And during the season, um, the Bears also traded with the Steelers to get Chase Claypool. 
to get him a red zone threat, another downfield guy. And that was a smart move, but Claypool dealt with some injuries as well. So now um, you saw Justin Fields uh, beginning to establish a rapport with uh, Mooney. Um, you saw him uh, starting to develop somewhat in the passing game, but realistically, uh, Iberflus and Getze were really relying so much on Fields in the running game. And you saw him get dinged up towards the end of the season as well. Now, here's where it gets huge. Um, this past offseason, over the uh, over the weekend, uh, Friday, the Carolina Panthers traded with they traded up with the Bears to get the number one draft pick, which the Bears had previously by uh, virtue of where they finished this past season. Now, they traded up and gave the Bears the number nine overall pick in the 2023 draft. That's this one. The number 61 overall pick in the 2023 draft. That's this one. A 2024 first round pick. That's next year. And a 2025 second round pick. But the big one here is they also traded wide receiver DJ Moore. Now that's big because what that does is give Justin Fields a legitimate number one at the wide receiver position and further round out a wide receiver group that can really be good, you know, uh, providing that uh, providing that the Bears go ahead and solidify the offensive line and continue to work with Justin Fields in the passing game and uh, uh, working that scheme and him getting more familiar with it because now you've got Mooney who can take the top off. Uh, and he can run the route tree. You've got DJ Moore, who's a complete receiver who can run the route tree. You've got Claypool, who's a big receiver, who's a red zone threat and can take the top off uh, with some downfield shots. So now you've got that. You've got um, uh, Cole Komet, who should be in his third year as a tight end uh, out of Notre Dame. And we know Notre Dame is uh, known for putting uh, quality tight ends in the league. So now you've got a quality tight end. You've got three quality receivers. And you have this number nine overall pick as well as the number 61 overall pick. So I've seen uh, Pro Football Focus, uh, they they had a possible, uh, they had a mock draft with um, the Bears drafting Jackson Smith and Jigba at number nine. Now, what's special about that? That's getting another really, really good slot receiver and a guy who Fields knows well, because why? They played together at Ohio State. That could be elite. So now you've got four quality receivers if you want to do a four receiver set or if you want a guy that <clears throat> excuse me can come in and be a difference maker kind of once he gets a feel for the speed and uh the system in the nfl jackson smith and jigba that should be awesome this is going to be really really interesting to see now on the flip side of this some people are wondering why did the bears make this move well it's showing that they have confidence in justin fields they're all in on justin fields but if you don't make this move what happens is what was the main argument for Justin Fields last year? That he didn't have a whole lot to work with. So there was a lot of speculation, would the Bears trade him, et cetera, et cetera, or would they draft a quarterback with that number one overall? Even if they had done that, all they would have been doing was bringing in a new quarterback into the same situation, which everyone was bemoaning and decrying in terms of saying that Justin Fields didn't have the weaponry to work with. So you would have been doing the same thing. So I like this move. Um, Justin Fields is really, really solid. Uh, DJ Moore is a legitimate number one. I don't think he's a top 10 receiver in the NFL, but he's probably in that 10 to 20 range, which is still really, really good in terms of having a number one overall. Um, but now you look at it from the Panthers side. OK, the Panthers got that number one overall pick. And if you feel like uh, there's a quarterback in this draft that's going to be that guy, well, then you have to do it right. This is a quarterback league, first and foremost. But then you wonder. What are the Panthers going to do? What are they going to do? They traded away their best receiver by letting DJ Moore go to the Bears. So now you're basically putting uh, your rookie quarterback in a situation that the Bears were in, in terms of not having weapons for your young guy. I, I'm really not sure what's going to go on there. Um, then the question is, who are they going to take at number one? Is there truly a definitive uh, QB1 in this draft? For me, it's CJ Stroud. Um, but a lot of guys really, really like uh, uh, Bryce Young out of Alabama. The problem is his size, but 
we're starting to see more and more that size is becoming uh, less of a deterrent for guys to get drafted. We saw Kyler Murray, um, obviously Drew Brees is the gold standard for a small quarterback doing great things, Russell Wilson. But, you know, in the NFL, man, these, off these offensive linemen are absolutely huge. So now you're in a situation where you're saying, you know, can, can this small quarterback see uh, they're going to have to run a system where there's a lot of boots, a lot of waggles. You've got to do things to put him in a position, him being Bryce Young, if they draft him, where he is going to be able to see to throw the football. Now, I, again, am a CJ Stroud guy, just having watched this guy play, his ability to uh, slice and dice from the pocket, I think is awesome. Um, and we're seeing more and more uh, coaches and, and organizations are becoming more, um, uh, they're, they're they're becoming more uh, in tune with uh, quarterbacks that are mobile now, and that's becoming more and more a part of the game. And maybe at one point that was a concern, but we saw against Georgia in the national semifinal that if he needs to, CJ Stroud can get out there and move. Now that's not his style. He would prefer to throw darts from the pocket and that's fine because at the end of the day in the NFL, that's probably what you're gonna have to do more often than not to truly win at a high level. But that mobility is also an outstanding weapon to have. So um, I'm really curious to see what the Panthers are going to do, what they've set themselves up for, and what that young quarterback coming in is going to do. So, uh, but for the Bears, I think this was really, really an outstanding move. I loved it. I love the fact that they're showing that they're all in on Justin Fields. They trust him. They're getting him weapons. Um, clearly, they need to secure that offensive line some more so that they don't have to run him like a running back and they can take advantage of his ability to throw the football from the pocket. Because again, if you watched at Ohio State, he was a guy that obviously we knew about the mobility, but he wasn't he wasn't running just to run. When he was running, he was running while looking to throw the football downfield. So this is definitely, I think, gonna be a really good season for the Bears. And the NFC North is going to be a very interesting division, especially if Aaron Rodgers does what a lot of people think and moves on to the Jets, which at that point would make the AFC East also a very interesting division, man. So football, man, uh, the NFL is just amazing. There's a reason why we say NFL is king. And now we're seeing it um, some years ago, you know, maybe five years ago, et cetera. We saw that the NBA dominated the offseason. The NFL offseason wasn't that big a thing. Now we are seeing it. That anything the NFL wants, it takes. And this this podcast wasn't really about that, but you're really starting to see it. You know, they are now starting to dominate Christmas Day because they got that extra game. And Christmas Day is uh, generally the domain of the NBA. And uh, we saw it this past year because it fell on a Sunday that the NFL completely blew away the NBA on Christmas Day. So you got that. Um, you're seeing the NFL offseason. They've turned the combine just into a huge show. The draft, uh, the the, the pre-draft coverage, the free agency period, all of that. So, yes, the NFL is king. Uh, the Bears put themselves in great shape by uh, trading away that number one overall pick and still landing at number nine. And uh, you got to love the fact that they're showing they're all in on Justin Fields. They trust Justin Fields and they believe he can be the guy of the future. Now he just has to go out and show him. All right. So anyway, um, what I'd like to know from you, what do you think of uh, this deal? What do you think of it for the Panthers? What do you think of it for the Bears? Uh, what do you think the Bears should do with that number nine overall pick? Um, leave your comments here in the comments section. And I uh, can't wait to see you on the next episode. And I'm out. Peace.